girls, I am so excited to be with you today. So let's start our time in prayer. Lord, thank you that you are so, so good. I pray that as we sing this song, we would be reminded that you are good, that you walk in life with us, that you never leave us. You are a good father and friend. And so, Lord, I pray that we would be reminded of that today. In your name we pray. Amen. Sing with me, King of my heart. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, He is my are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good. boys and girls. Happy Sunday. So today we're talking about a super important part in Israel's journey uh, through the wilderness and into the promised land. And it is the receiving of the Ten Commandments. Now I'm sure you guys have memorized these at home. Some of you have. And if you haven't, it's actually a really good summer side project to work on. So I'd encourage you to do that. And so, but before we could go too far into talking about the Ten Commandments, Let's remember all that God has done for his people up until this point. And so God sees his people in slavery in Egypt. He rescues them from slavery. He sends Moses to speak to Pharaoh on, um, to be able to, to do this exchange. And so uh, he liberates his people from Egypt. God parts the Red Sea so his people can be free and walk through the, through the Red Sea on dry ground and be safe on the other side. He provides water and food for them in the desert. And then he also helps Moses be a better leader to his people by providing Jethro, by Jethro giving Moses advice. So God has done so much for his people up until this point. And so now the Israelites have been in the wilderness for about three months now. And so God leads his people to Mount Sinai, a giant mountain in the wilderness. And Moses and God meet. And so God says to Moses, Moses, 
If my people keep my commandments and keep my covenant, I will make them great and they will be my chosen people. And so Moses tells this, relays this information, gives this information to the Israelites. And so, and the Israelites say, yes, we will. We want to be God's chosen people, his holy nation. And so then God, God here, Moses says that to God, God hears it. And so then um, God decides a couple days later to come down on the mountain. He is actually going to be on the mountain, right? And so they've given this covenant back and forth. So God is going to give them the Ten Commandments. So boys and girls, let's think back though of the word covenant. Where have we heard the word covenant before? Right? Think, think way, way back. That's right. Abraham. I'm sure all of you said Abraham at home, right? So remember God gave a covenant to Abraham. He gave Abraham a promise saying that I will make your descendants as many as the stars in the sky and more than the sand on the beach, right? He gave a promise to Abraham saying that he would do this. Well, God has now made a promise with the people of Israel saying that if they keep his commandments, if they keep his covenant, then he will be with them. He will make them uh, his, his chosen people, right? And so, and this is called the Mosaic covenant. The covenant with Abraham is called the Abrahamic covenant. Okay. So now Moses goes up on the mountain, on Mount Sinai, where God's, God is, and he's there for 40 days. And at the end of that, God gives him the Ten Commandments and God wrote it with his own finger. Can you imagine? God wrote it, all that, the Ten Commandments with his own finger, and they are as follows. Do not have other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You must honor your father and your mother. You must not murder. You must keep your marriage promises. You must not steal. You must not lie. You must not want what belongs to someone else. And so God gave these 10 commandments. Now, the first four of the commandments have to do with how we love God, our relationship with him. The last six have to do with how we love others, our relationship with the people around us, right? And so, boys and girls, do you think God just gives rules because he likes to? Because it's fun? No, his rules have purpose. They have, he has a reason for every single rule that he gives, right? Just like your parents. Your parents don't just make up rules because it's fun to have rules in your house, right? No, they have rules to help keep you safe and to help you show love and care to the people around you, to your, to your family members, right? And so God just doesn't have these rules because it's fun to have rules. He has these rules because they show us how life works best right? It shows us how we can have a right relationship with God and have a right relationship with the people around us. And so God is holy. Let's remember the gospel, boys and girls, right? We remember God is holy. He is perfect and he cannot be with sin. And I'm pretty sure we've all broken most of these commandments at some point, right? We certainly don't honor God the way that he he should be honored all the time. We certainly, you know, don't speak in a loving way to our parents. We don't honor our father and mother, right? And that can look like uh, not obeying when they ask you to do something, right? Or talking back to them, speaking to them in a disrespectful voice, right? And we, a lot of times, we want things that belong to someone else. The Bible calls that coveting, right? And so we are not perfect. We fall short of that. But boys and girls, that's why God sends Jesus. That's why Jesus comes because he is perfect and he is able to do all of those things perfectly. So now our covenant with God, our relationship with him is not based upon how, on how well we're able to follow these commandments. God's covenant with us is now based on how perfectly Jesus can fill these commandments, which it is perfect. He does it perfectly well. And so we are able to keep 
in that covenant relationship with God even now. And so as we remember these Ten Commandments, as we memorize them, which is it, it is really good to do, let's remember that first and foremost, we cannot be perfect. We cannot follow these rules perfectly, but that's why Jesus came for us. And so he could help us. And so he can fill those for us. So let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the Ten Commandments. Thank you for your covenant. Thank you for the promise that you've given us that as we follow these rules, as we follow these commandments, Lord, you'll be with us. And I thank you that you don't look at our ability to do that, but you look at Jesus's ability to do that, which is perfect. Thank you for sending him. Thank you for your word. Thank you for every single promise that is in it. In your name we pray. Amen.